what do you get if you combine a wave of costume historical Disney costumes, a TV phenomenon with historically inspired and also pretty Empire Line gowns, a wander into the obscure corners of the history of camo, a rather large amount of stripy fabric bought very cheaply, and marinade with the prospect of an exciting new live action Disney villain film. I give you Regency Cruella de Vil. No dogs were harmed in the making of this dress. I wanted something a little more interesting than the standard vertical stripes, but I wasn't quite sure what. I made a few very rough sketches and showed them to a few friends to help me decide which was the best. They weren't hugely helpful, everyone liked something different. While I was working out this pattern, after I did the sketches, I kind of narrowed it down a bit. Then I decided to do some little 3D models, just to try and get an idea of where these stripes are going. Now the stripes are not to scale. My stripes are actually bigger than this. A little skirt. Okay, so I'm pretty much sure I'm going to do this chevrony thing. And then I did some little bodices. I actually printed out the pattern small. So There's a straight stripe, stripe in the same direction as the skirt. So I wanted to see how the darts affected the pattern. It affected the pattern far more on the straight one. You can see it bends the darts, which kind of looks a bit weird. And that chevron's going up. I think this is the one that we like. And I also did the backs and sides. The chevron's going up and down. And side. The side, one's going down with the sides kind of going up quite like that and then back going straight down which is nice but not what I'm after. The final decision was to go with this front and this back. Now I've got a plan I can get on with it. Pattern matching. If you're going to pattern match something the first thing you need to do is transfer your pattern onto some kind of paper you can see through. What I've done here, I've traced the altered pattern after I've done a fitting, so it's not quite the same. But I've traced my altered pattern onto this thick architect's paper. I'll link below what I use for this because it's really good and I like to use it for my patterns anyway. I've also added a seam at the front because I'm going to have to join the front seam which wasn't part of the original pattern. You then need to carefully mark the seam allowances on any edges that you care about pattern matching because you might not care on all edges because if you think the shapes are curved you're not going to match on both edges. So I've marked the 5 8 in this case seam allowance all the way up here. kind of don't care further up. I care here. This is where I really want to pattern match. And this edge. You want more than one edge and then it should just work. Next, the fabric. Which is this too stripy. Love it. So now when you put your pattern piece on your fabric and you've got to do it on the right side so you can see the pattern, you can now see through what the pattern is going to be. Pick where you're going to put it. So you'll see you're looking inside the seam allowance. You could also do this with a pattern with no seam allowance and just add seam allowance on afterwards. I want a chevron and I need to decide how I want that to lie. So if I do it like that, the black is going to be in the corner there and in the corner here. So that's going to be a black triangle and a black V there. Or if I want a little bit of white at the top, I need to do it more like that. And we will go with that. Fix that in place. Before you cut it out or after you fixed it, this is a clever bit, on your pattern piece mark where your underlying pattern is. I very much need to just mark on where my stripes are. I mean, it doesn't matter what the pattern is, if it's a floral pattern you draw the flowers. I mean obviously not in great detail but you just need to have an indication of exactly where that pattern is. And then I'm just gonna colour that in so that I know those are the black ones because that's going to be easy to forget. Okay, and cut it out. So there it is, all cut out. Now for the second piece, put your pattern back down, flip it over, because obviously we're doing the other side. And then you just simply need to rotate your pattern until the pattern you drew matches with the pattern on the fabric. So I actually need to move that up so that the black is on black, white is on white. Make sure all the marks you have made line up nicely and fasten it down securely and cut it out.
I've popped this onto Doris to see what it's like because I'm a bit concerned about this piping but it won't sit flat because I've got three layers of piping it's wanting to curving out should be flat like that and it doesn't want to go flat now I still want to sew that in but I'm worried it's going to just make everything bulge I'm not really sure here really bendy I'm not sure I'm gonna have to do a fiddle about to see whether I can make this lie flat by pressing it or if I'm gonna have to redo it I've, I've trimmed to there but of course there's this whole section here which won't bend still fighting this piping I think I'm gonna unpick it unpick the lot do it again I'm gonna have to deal with the fact that some of this is already clipped but I think it's just a matter of being really careful so I will see you on the other side when I have unpicked all the piping and put it back on separately So there we go, that's the redone piping, each one put on separately. I ended up putting on the black one first, which is not cut on the bias because I had to cut a strip. So that's got little, lots of little cut. The red one's cut on the bias, the stripy one's cut on the bias, which means they actually bend nicely, much nicer. Definitely worth going back and doing again. This is a bit tricky to film but I want to cut out the skirt so I've drafted up, scaled up the front panel from the pattern because I couldn't be bothered to print out that many pieces of paper but I've added a seam allowance on the front middle because usually that would be a on the fold but because I need to do this symmetry thing like this um, I need to do it in two halves because I'm using a cotton lawn as my interlining I can see the stripes so I'm able to actually literally lie that on there nice and flat so I can cut around it and then like we did for the bodice I will mark where the stripes begin and end on the lining and then I can and then I can use that as the other side flatline them together and hopefully we'll be able to pattern match what I might actually do is leave a little bit at the bottom and top just in case I need to move things up and down mark them all on mark which one's the black one because I'm always going to feel an idiot you don't need to mark them all just enough to get some kind of feel for where they all are event I ever make this look easy this mess is trying to get the dart right under the bust and that's not even all of them because trying to get different curves different angles this one is the original pattern this one is the one that we ended up pinning in but I didn't believe it so believe what you pin even though it's just weird um, this is the only one that seems to work and even this is going to have to be s shaped so and it's still not perfect but you know darts Added hem and I can't find a lot of evidence for how it was done so I am going to use some slightly battered uh, quilting batting it's been stored a long time and has got a bit mothed and I want it quite thick so I'm gonna do I want it six thick I think I've done the fiddling around so it's going to be five inches wide and then fold it over so that should be about right for the thickness I want Okay, I'm still making this up and I think I'm actually going to be better off folding it into four and then kind of rolling it because what I'm trying to do is, is make something that won't bend so it needs to be 
So it kind of needs to be quite stiff. So I'm going to do it into a tight roll. I think I'll pin that and then work out how to insert it into the hem. Here's the finished padding. I've decided to go round. I don't know if that's right, but that's kind of what I've done. I've sewn it all up into a like a, a snaky thing. I can't think of the word. Into a roll. Because then you've got this whole thing where it doesn't want to bend, which is what we want. We want it to be kind of to hold the fabric out. Now, I've been trying to work out how to do this. First of all, I thought the idea would be to kind of roll this under the hem and sew it there. I thought that you would roll it in and then kind of sew shut like a hem. Then I realised I didn't have enough left all the way around so I sewed an extender on the bottom but that's gonna be really fiddly so I had another look at extend garments and I think that this is covered with fabric separately and then the whole thing is sewn onto the hem I think it's gonna be a lot easier and I think it will make it look more like some of the extant versions one of them even has piping which really makes it obvious to me that it's a separate piece not just folded into the hem so that is what we're going to do Take this off again and then we'll get on to covering this. Luckily I have quite a lot of this fabric. This has taken me several goes to work out how to do this. I still don't know if it's right, but it's a way. I had the hem marked on the outside where we did fitting and, and marked where the hem should be. I then marked an inch up from the hem and then to just to check that it worked, I've pinned the whole padded thing onto that line and it, it just gives it a nice... I don't think I can get this smooth, but then all the extant examples, they're wrinkly as well, so it is what it is. I'm actually going to try it on the sewing machine with a zipper foot. If it doesn't work, I'll hand sew it. Probably won't get footage of it if it's machine sewed, because, because you won't. We'll go from there. So I've done lots of maths and I've worked out the trim is going to be little triangles. The maths I've done is I need two strips of triangles five inches long. Now one of the penalties, a couple of the penalties of buying cheap fabric is the marks. So this one's got a stain here and also the stripes go wonky at the edges. That's not an artifact of the camera, they actually do go wonky. So basically that edge piece is pretty much unusable but that's fine. It was very cheap fabric. So what I'm actually going to do for this is just dump that whole piece. I need to make sure I am perpendicular to the stripes that I've got. Get rid of that. So the first thing I need to do is half an inch on each edge form a seam line. I'm going to start just doing dots first, otherwise I might get confused and just draw on there. Do one side. And then do these. And so on for 150 inches. So now get my triangles, just lay them out on here. I'm just going to pin these on all the way down. Probably what I'll do is do this in stretches. Let's see how many pins we've got. feels like it's been going on forever this project. It's quite difficult to see on camera but I've had a play as to where I want it and I think for this kind of period you want the trim as low as possible to keep the elongation of the pattern. So I marked it all out and then realised I was wrong so I've started marking it again. The great thing about using these friction pens is I can just press all that away. So that's going about there, is about there. It's really not very helpful, but that's kind of what it's going to look like. Machine sew this on and then I'll probably hand sew the main stuff on because control. Every time I try and shortcut on this project, it goes wrong. So I need to just take the time to pull around and mark those and then sew them on. <laughs> 